William Shatner. But the distances, I don't have to tell you, the distances, it's only like a, a, a long, uh, it's like a marathon. <laughs> Thank you for being here, I'm so delighted to be here to see you. Uh -huh. um, Kansas City, I know Kansas City very well. I've been here often for the uh, horse show. Are you aware there's a horse show? Uh, uh, so over the years, I've come back to Kansas City many times and have had uh, all kinds of adventures at the... Where is the horse show held? Here? The Kemper, the Royal. Oh, at the Royal, yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll probably be back uh, this year in the, in the fall or the early winter. So, uh, how to begin? Why don't somebody... Are, you, are we set up for questions? Yeah, why doesn't somebody ask me a question? Like, why are you here? I'm Christine. No, no, you need a microphone. Oh, I'm Christine. You're 15? Christine. <laughs> Christine. Like Nurse Christine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so far, it's not so good. <laughs> well, it's going to get worse. <laughs> I'm so Right, right into the microphone, sweetie. I'm so happy that I've lived long enough to see you, and I am grateful to the good Lord that you've lived long enough for me to see you. Wow. <laughs> wow that's beautiful. And happy birthday. Uh, but so far, there's no question. No, that's all I <laughs> Thank you very much. That's it? <laughs> So now we need a question. I can do that. I was just wondering if you have any memories of DeForest Kelly that you'd like to share. Uh, with, with DeForest Kelly? Yes, sir. Beautiful DeForest Kelly, the Southern beauty. Uh, I, I have a favorite story I, <clears throat> I'd like to tell you about uh, DeForest Kelly. I've told it a few times, so. So those of you who have heard it, um, you'll have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, at, at DeForest, um, DeForest was a, a southern gentleman, a true southern gentleman. He, he, uh, he, he was soft-spoken and had lovely manners and, and uh, he was a, quite a wonderful guy. But, you know, he, he, but, but he was from the south, which made him uh, like a, a, a little different, I, I, you know. <laughs> so, um, I I learned uh, archery. Where is he going with archery? <laughs> I learned archery by uh, shooting a film, a uh, western film, and I'm standing uh, beside a tree, and uh, and the director say, "Well, the Indians are coming over the mountains there, and you'll know that the Indians are there because an arrow is going to shoot by and 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 launch itself into the tree." I said, "Oh, okay. Uh, an arrow is going to go by me and shoot into the tree." He said, "Yeah." The director said, "Don't worry, don't worry. We're going to put a wire from the tree." to this gentleman over here, who's the archer, who's gonna have little rings on his arrow, and we'll put it on the wire, and he'll shoot the arrow, and the arrow's on a wire, and it goes into the tree. I oh, said, okay. So, I'm standing there, and the director says, action, oh no, wait a minute! The wire broke. Yeah, no, but don't worry, he's a great uh, archer, and we're going to put a little piece of tape right there, and he's going he's gonna to sh gonna shoot the arrow without the arrow. And the arrow goes into the tree, and it's all goes, I go to the archer, and I say, my God, man, that was really good. Uh, uh, show me what you did, and I show you, and it introduces me to the art of archery. So then, 
I get pretty good at it, I compete, and, and one day I meet a tall, lean man by the name of Fred Bear. Fred Bear was a great archer and a great uh, hunter. He hunted with a bow and arrow everywhere. And so he taught me. So he taught me to hunt. Which is like, you stalk. <laughs> and you watch. You observe the, what you, and you go slowly. And then, which way is the wind? You're full of observation. <laughs> Have I got you now? <laughs> Are you wondering what this has to do with the forest cow? Yeah. Well, let me tell you how it goes. So when you shoot a movie in the studio, there's a table, large table, with food on it. And the food is paid for by the studio, not because they're generous, but because they want you to work with energy. So they provide some free food. So I would, every so often, I would sit back and watch <laughs> people come in, how they eat, what they do. It's kind of interesting. And every so often, DeForest would come in and the southern gentleman would come in to see what's for breakfast. Now you'd think he'd say, uh, uh, any grits? You know? Is it a southern gentleman? No, what he would do is he'd pick up a bagel and he'd cut the bagel and he'd put it in the toaster and he'd wait for the bagel. <laughs> I'm going to eat a bagel. <laughs> Frequently when you shoot a movie, you shoot it at night. Because the scene is at night, you go outside, it's dark, it's moody. Bleh. So when you shoot at night, you start at 6 o'clock in the evening and work till 6 o'clock in the morning. That's a night shoot. When, you, when you're with somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning, they tend to talk and reveal themselves. I talk with my southern gentleman friend, you know. And we trade intimacies. And one day he said to me, you know, Bill, I think I'm losing my mind. <laughs> no, really, don't laugh, Bill. Because I keep forgetting things. I don't remember, I don't remember where my keys are. I don't, I don't remember, I don't, I'm, I'm losing it, Bill, I'm losing it. And I would say, no, no, DeForest, don't be silly. You know, everybody forgets names. What's your, what's, what's your name? Oh, DeForest, that's right. <laughs> no, DeForest, it's okay. No, Bill, it's not. I, B, D, D, it's all right. I'm telling you, do, don't, don't worry about that. For, okay, Bill. So he's <laughs> eating, waiting for the, the bagel to be toasted. And I come by, and there's uh, Leonard. I said, Leonard. Distract D. So I said, uh, D, I got something in my eye. Would you come over here? And he goes over there. I go over to the toaster. I pop the toaster. I grab the toaster, put the toaster in there. <laughs> now the forest comes back and it's like over the thing, and the thing pops up. <laughs> and there's nothing there. <laughs> so now. He's lost his joy and is very agitated. So now he takes another bagel. Cuts it. Now the joy is gone. He puts it there. And now he pushes the toaster. And now he's waiting. But, but it's no longer I'm going to eat it. It's I'm going to eat it. And I say, Distract. <laughs> D, you didn't get it out of my eye. It's right. So he, the force goes over there and pop the toaster. <clears throat> and I take the toaster, the bacon, I don't know what to do. So I'm standing over here. The force comes back. The thing pops up. 
and there's nothing there. Now, he's filled with panic. He's filled. He sees me going, <laughs> You son of a bitch! <laughs> He didn't talk to me for three days. <laughs> and that was like that month. Then a month later, we're all in a, uh, the, uh, DeForest and Leonard and I would have a, a, a dressing. We, every morning we'd meet there and talk and laugh. And, and one morning DeForest came in. <clears throat> and he said, on the throne, I'm here. Somebody in India does that. I mean, hello, bring me a fortune in pearls. Did you bring your pearls? Not today. Not today. <laughs> right into the microphone. Hello, I'm... Hello. Hello. I'm Deanna. Oh, Diana. Deanna. Deanna, excuse me. <laughs> You're okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I have a question. Before Star Trek ever there was nothing. <laughs> Pretty much. But you guys wouldn't um, exist at all without the legendary Lucille Ball because she financed it with her studio. Um, do you remember her? Did she come into the I studio? I do. Oh, good. Can you tell me a story about Lucille? No, I'm not going to tell you a thing. <laughs> Very much, no, she, she was, I remembered Lucille Ball, I, would, I was, and then, in fact, as a child, youngster, there was a movie theater near my house on Monkland Avenue, and the theater was called the Monkland Avenue Theater. Strange, huh? Yeah. And every Saturday afternoon, my, I would have whatever the, the dime or the quarter that it cost to go to the film, and they would have like three films. Well, I'd go in in the middle of the afternoon and not emerge until bedtime. I mean, I loved the movies, so I saw all those old movies, and and they would, and those old movies with those showgirls walking down the stairs, da 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 down the stairs. The pretty girl. One of them was Lucille Ball. Did you know that? No, she was like a. Not a Gershwin, but a... Uh, Wasn't she in uh, Sigmund's Follies? Oh, 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 oh. Sigmund's Follies. A Folly? Yes. How did you know that? I, I have it on still on VHS. So she would come down, she was a Follies girl, and she'd come down with a feather in her head and a brief cloak. With a whip. A what? With a whip. With a whip? Yeah, she had one. She had a whip? And one of those <laughs> on a Ferris wheel. No kidding. Yeah. Well, why am I telling you? 
you are that you don't like. <laughs> That's good. So I, I saw her and thought, wow, what a beautiful redhead. And then she married Desi Lu, Desi Arnaz. And they formed it, they were very popular, and they formed a studio they called Desi Lu. Now somehow, and I don't know how, they occupied a piece of Paramount Studios to the point where they put up a wall, a brick wall, that that was Desi Lu, and the rest of the, uh, the large area was uh, Paramount. And how that happened, I don't know. But Desi Lu had become a separate arm of Paramount while residing at Paramount. So apparently, Desi Lu thought that uh, this thing that uh, Roddenberry, Gene Roddenberry, was calling Star Trek was interesting. So they, they, they uh, I don't think they financed. I think what they did was they sold it. They, they sold the idea to the National Broadcasting Corporation, NBC, which was then like one of three major uh, places where you'd go see television. So NBC then said, okay, 